Hi, welcome to Civil Engineering 305. I am trying to do a class where uh, we are trying to learn about uh, strength of materials by answering some questions. So I have organized it into a series of questions. Don't be worried about the number, which says it's about 55 questions. But I really want you to understand that we are breaking it down into tiny pieces and we're going to look at answers to each of these questions. And that's the way you will learn uh, Civil Engineering 305, which is uh, the strength of materials or the mechanics of materials or introduction to structural mechanics and so on. Okay, so the first question we will try to answer is the following. What the heck is a structure? You know, you've heard of this thing a lot. So we're going to look at what is meant by a structure. So, by the way, this is not generally going to be a PowerPoint presentation because I know what will happen. You will fall asleep immediately after about two minutes. So, actually, I'm going to use the PowerPoint to just illustrate the questions. After that, we are going to switch to something slightly different. To um, We are going to do a written version. So, our first question, which is, what is meant by structure? So, if you imagine a structure, I want you to think about a picture frame. Okay, so here's a picture frame. So here's the frame for a picture. And I want you to imagine, what does it do? Well, you know what it does, right? It holds a picture and puts it in place. This is typically what structures do. The core element of a structure is a rigid or stiff, typically stiff body that holds other bodies in place. Okay, this is usually called constraining. Okay, that's what a structure does. In the process, it will protect these bodies against external forces and prevent damage to them. So this is what it does. So it protects these bodies against external forces um, and uh, prevent them from moving around. Okay. The way it does that is by, roughly speaking, it will channel forces around these bodies and transmits them forces to the ground. That's what it does. It will, it will channel these forces around these bodies and how we do it and how we design it and how we make sure it works properly is what this class is about. But that's what a structure does. So think of a structure. You can think of it. Think of it as a force pipe. Just like a pipe takes fluid around from one point, point to another and channels it around places, a structure is a force pipe. Okay, that's what a structure is. And in the process, it will hold things in place. So when you look at a structure, you have to ask, what is it holding? And what does it do? So typically the things that it holds may be very heavy in which case I have to transmit the force to the ground in some way um, without the force going through other bodies and crushing them. So let's look at some examples and then you'll see what I mean. So our first example is a bookshelf. Here's an example of a bookshelf that you can see. And what it does is very simple thing, right? It holds books in place. In this particular case, it's anchored to the wall. So what will happen is the bookshelf uh, here are the here is the body that it needs to hold in place 
here is what is called the frame of the bookshelf which then transmits the weight of these books to the wall and it protects them because from damage because if I put something on it it won't crush the book okay of course there are some whimsical bookshelves I'll just show you what I mean by that here's a bookshelf which does exactly the same thing this is the main part of it can you see that bar that's the main part and if you know computer programming language it's an example of trying to, to trying to mess around with you there are brackets there are square brackets there are curly brackets all kinds of things and it holds things in place okay this is a classic example and here the objects that are being constrained are these guys those are the objects that are being constrained and those are the cause of the forces on this bookshelf and this bookshelf has to take it okay so now let's look at a different example because so this is a very familiar one to you this is a car okay now what does a car frame do can you see this frame here so it holds the wheels in place it holds the chair it holds all of these things everything in place at the same time it protects the occupants right that's a very fundamental aspect of how uh, frames work so car frame actually what i want you to notice is that in all of these cases the frames seem to be made of bars you know like long rods type of thing and you will see that this is a common thing we don't use solid blocks of steel to hold it because first of all solid blocks of steel are very heavy second thing is they're useless most of the material in the block is not doing anything so we are very clever about using material in a very very systematic and uh, short way that's why we have this kind of a frame now let's look at uh, details of this look at that <coughs> this particular car is called a unibody construction and all the pieces are shown what i want you to notice is that most of the pieces are in the form of bars can you see that all kinds of bars this is a common common theme about frames and structures and we will heavily use this point okay so i wanted to see how these bars work and of course you know we'll look at this is a mechanical engineering type of application now let's look at something that's quite vastly different than this which is a bridge so i don't know whether you're familiar with this bridge this is the newest version of the big bridge across the san francisco bay um, there used to be an old bridge which is called the bay bridge which suffered severe damage during one of the earthquakes and they realized that they really needed to replace it with a new bridge here is a new bridge and what i want you to see is that these pillars each of them have a particular shape can you see that the cross section of this thing has a particular shape the i beam has a particular shape this is how we control how this whole bridge behaves so let's ask the following question so what is it holding in place well obviously cars it's constraining the cars and buses and things like that right and making them go from point a to point b because it is a very large object it has to carry its own weight which is pretty heavy right and in this particular case i don't know whether you can see this particular cable system it's a remarkable cable system it looks like a hammock like that and the bridge is actually hanging off of a hammock okay this is the latest greatest design in bridges and it really, really, literally looks like a hammock so it allows the bridge to sway and prevent damage okay in this case it has to make sure that cars are able to go through even if there are violent earthquakes and other things so that's how it works the next one is a biological example and you can see a t-rex the skeleton of the t-rex is its frame this is what holds all the other pieces together and i don't know whether you can see but there is a long beam like thing in the middle notice its legs are solid bent beams its rib cage is solid bent beams you can see that there are pieces here only the skull is not in the form of a beam and that's an entirely different thing okay but i want you to understand that uh, the next to it of course is a dog or a dog skeleton again it forms a frame and you can see there is the main beam and here are the subsidiary beams which are allowing the load to go 
to the ground and it protects the soft organs that are inside and holds them in place. Okay, so this is another example of what we mean by a frame. The last one, of course, I'm deliberately showing you some whimsical bicycles. And a bicycle is something that you are very familiar with and it's obvious to you where the frame is, right? That's the bicycle frame, there you go. This particular one is made in a particular way. What I want you to notice is that in these cases, I want you to see how this frame looks. Okay, most frames are built out of bars which are arranged in the form of triangles or arches. And we will see why those two shapes are very good. But I want you to understand that those are a very key idea behind this and that's what they are doing. So I, you saw how this thing works, right? There you go. There's the frame, there's the wheel and so on. And there's the handlebar. All of them are part of the frame. They help you hold things. In this case, the frame holds the wheels in place. The wheels themselves are frames because they hold, they hold uh, other objects like spokes and other things. So there's like, you know, there's like a hierarchy of frames. I want you to understand that. And the bottom line is that if you are going, if you are, if you're going to hold something in place, you have to make sure that the forces that are required to hold them, the frame can withstand them. That's actually a very key idea. Okay. These are not the only things, oil tankers, pipelines. So up to now we have seen things that hold uh, solid objects. But an oil tanker holds oil which is a liquid object and the body of the oil tanker is also a frame. In this case, it's constraining a liquid. A gas tanker, same way, a pipeline, all of them are constraining or holding something in place. Okay, so I want you to realize that all of them do the same function. You look around, you want to hold a body in place, you have to build something that's semi-rigid, stiff, so that they are able to hold and you have to build them strong enough so that they work. Thank you.